Hi and welcome to my playhouse. I have some awesome subscribers out there because I was just sent this server. Uh, it's not my brand, it's a Hewlett Packard, but it's a DL560 Generation 8. I was contacted by CERN in Germany. We call it CERN, or they might call it CERN. I don't know. But CERN runs a file converting company down there where um, online you can convert any file type to any other file type. CERN has been using Hewlett Packard servers and apparently my videos on some Hewlett Packard servers has been helpful at the start. He uh, wrote to me and said that he had now changed to AMD machines, custom built, so business must be good. I have been checking out his website and um, looks very nice and you're able to convert a lot of file types to other file types. But he wanted to send me one of his servers that he was not using and uh, yeah, I could do whatever I wanted with this, even put it up for sale. He just wanted to support what I do. I am not going to put it up for sale, not right away anyway, but we might do a couple of videos um, installing some stuff on here. But in this video, I'm going to be starting with unboxing it and then we're going to have an overview. And we're now going to go back in time. Time travel is a regular thing on this channel. We're going to move back in time when it was in the box. So, Morton from the past. So as said, this box arrived uh, from Germany, Leipzig, where CERN has sent it to me. And apparently CERN is shopping at Server Shop 24 in Germany because the box is from there. I am of course a big fan of uh, Bargain Hardware in the UK, where uh, you get 5% off of your purchase if you uh, use the coupon code My Playhouse. So, Let's get into the box. This is a heavy box, 31.5 kilograms. Servers are not fun shipping. So I have shipped some servers myself and it's irritating when the post office are the ones making the best deals because of the cost of shipping. Um, I like this box. It's smaller than the boxes that I usually... Oh, the rails! Oh, awesome! The Hewlett Packard rails. Oh, they are also heavy to ship, so uh, it's very nice that they are there. Oh, and you press that in. Okay. That's another system that I've seen. Uh, I've seen where you press uh, that way to release. You kind of put these in the rack and then this piece of metal here locks it in place and to release it you press that piece of metal down but yeah it's uh, very nice that there are rails with this server one for the right and one for the left cool there are some foam then there is a something here it's a car I don't know what that is. Looks like network cards. Uh, yeah, there is a there is a rate card here or an HPA. Not sure, but it's Hewlett Packard branded. I didn't know that would be in there. Does it say what it is? Someone needs his glasses. This is here on the back. It says that it's an SAS. 9205-8E uh, but it doesn't say anything about what uh, Hewlett Packard called this so I just cheated and went and, uh, and googled it and this is a host bus adapter so it's an HBA and Hewlett Packard calls it an H220 so uh, yeah host bus adapter awesome I'll put that to the side until we get the box out of the way also there is a network card here and this one is a, a, a LOM adapter that you put in the server on the system board and I can see that they say uh, it, it's one gigabit for ports but it's very nice to have those extra four ports I have no idea what's in the server so uh, we will we'll have a look at that packaging awesome 
packaging, 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 packaging. It's a big server. Well, maybe it's normal sized, but uh, it looks big. Oh, power supply. Two power supplies in the box. Oh, this is getting heavy. Ever so slightly. Something said a wrong sound. Something is loose in there. We need to figure that out. Something down here. I think I see what's going on here. That's not supposed to be there. Oh, well, let's let's go in and see. Normally we would go through the server front and back, but I want to pick that screw up on before it disappears somewhere else. So uh, we'll um, pick that up, put it to the side, and have a good look at this server. So here we have the front of the server, and this is the Hewlett Packard Polyant DL. 560 generation 8. This server uses four of the Intel Xeon E5, uh, that's the 4600 series. The 2600 series is able to handle two CPUs, the 4600 series is able to handle four CPUs, and there is an then you get up to an E7, and that can handle eight CPUs and then it's the 8800 series. This server is equipped with four CPUs and they're the Intel Xeon E5 4627 version two, which is kind of a purpose built CPU. We'll get back to that. But on the front here, we have a VGA port over here together with the release button to release the server. This server has seen some action, it has scratches, and uh, it has apparently seen some use. Uh, next to the VGA connection here in the front, uh, we have the Intel sticker warning you that there is a CN inside. Next to that, we have this pullout thing where we can read the serial number, the ILO DNS name, and the default password for the ILO. And on the other side, there is the serial number and the model number again. And the model number of this server is the 686785-001. So yeah, that pops back in. Very nice to have that there. I don't know why they put that on there. I want to put it over there with the SID, but that's probably because this one is always there and that one is optional, but never mind. We also have a USB connection hidden away down here. Nice, then we have one, two, three, four, five, six fans and they are hot pluggable so you can replace a fan if one should fail and and they're in a cage like this to make it hot pluggable i uh, i kind of think that it's possible to have a better fan solution here because i can see that there is one fan in here and it looks like there is two connections there is a connection here and there is a connection here i think the idea might be that they can actually have one fan two fan that can work together but this one only has one fan. So I don't know why this only has one fan and when it will have two fans, but probably when you put something in the server that will really heat it up. So underneath that, we have room for five hard drives. There are two drive trays in here. We can, Sean has put these in uh, and very nice because as you know, these trays can be quite expensive. Often when you get a server like this, the company is okay with giving you the server, but the hard drives, they don't want to give you because that might contain data that the company definitely don't want out there. So they will take the drives out, which means that they often just take the drive trays out because uh, that's the easiest thing. Unscrewing the drives is irritating. So if you're going to get a server from a company, ask if you can have the drive trays. You're probably not going to get the disks but ask if you can have the drive trays. You can easily pay 10, 12 euros for a drive tray like this, if you just want to lose one and, you know, and then there is shipping and stuff. So uh, often they just throw out the discs with the drive tray. So, um, so yeah, asking nicely might bring you a long way. Uh, this generation eight of this server is, is kind of rare because it's, it's high end enterprise server equipment. They were expensive. The 4600 series of the Intel CPUs were more expensive than the 2600 CPUs. The normal server, the DL380 generation eight 
uh, that server started at a very low price point where this server starts at a well price point that could easily be four times as high as the DL380 so they are more rare because they were more expensive so as we get out here uh, MT drives here room for five I said that but it has an SID which is this pop-out thing and here it would have been okay to have the serial number or something but then it does this trick so you have an error thing if, if there's something wrong with ps1 or ps2 you get a little dot here if there's something wrong with nick network card one two three four you get an error there over temperature power cap amp status um i forget what that is then there is a little led for each of the 24 ram blocks one more led for the next 24 ram blocks so this server holds 48 blocks of memory and then at the end we have the six fans at the front so if there is something wrong with fan number five it will light up there so that is awesome it also has two leds here health and network activity power on button is that one it has a usb and it has a uid uh, the magic blue button that you press and then there's a blue led on the back that lights up which is really handy when you have a rack full of these servers it, it saves you a little bit of time that you don't have to count down from the top and find number 15 so uh, that was the front let's do a little magic and turn around and get to the back um, oh there is not that much back here it seems like a lot of stuff has been pulled out so there's not a lot back here we can see that the network card is gonna go in here and this um, network card can be taken out because Hewlett Packard as any other brand they don't really know what network you're running so they're giving you options instead of just pushing something over your head next to that we have a serial connection then we have the ILO network connection uh, where you connect to the management of the server we have VGA connections we have four USB connections and we have that blue thing and on this one you can also press it on the back so if you have a problem on the back see that um, well, the network card is not lining up so we have to turn the server off so let's press that and go around the front and then uh, turn the server off we have two gapping holes for the power supplies and we don't need to have that because it did come with power supplies so i'm just gonna pick those up so they are here and they are 800 watts it says there so it's two 800 watt power supplies it needs a lot of power because those cpus that are in here they are 130 watts each so um, it might need that there is one and of course it's a redundant power supply that's standard with enterprise equipment we encountered this tool uh, that was laying on the floor after I took it out of the box. It kind of goes here. So, <laughs> service tool. So it comes with tools. Might be because you need it more than. Well, I'm not going to go there. So we are ready to go into it. And this is a heavy server. It's uh, from 23 kilograms to 37 kilograms, depending on what you put in it. It has the usual. Hewlett Packard uh, from this generation a locking mechanism a thing that you pull up like this and you can use the tool on the back and you can lock it here it, it's a screwdriver I think he so you can open it with a flathead screwdriver if you want to so uh, there is a little bit of a warning here if you are going to replace one of the hot plug uh, fans you have to do it within 60 seconds or the system will shut down that's nice to know might be ever so slightly irritating that it's located on the back of the server when the hot block fan is on the front but <laughs> yeah you might want to know that <laughs> have the new fan ready if you want to exchange it on the back of the lab we have this very nice drawing of where everything is which is always very nice and the socket of this server is the 2011 the cpu uses uh, 22 nanometers of uh, cpu technology so it's an older one the cpus are from 2014 or the generation is but there's a little bit about everything there's what everything is on the diagnostics panel here on the back on the motherboard on the front and uh, 
what the different things means on the hard drives when it says different stuff. I should read that. I've never checked. <laughs> so, yeah, you can you can read that. Read it out loud to me. That's the first place to go search for information if there's something wrong or you need to know something about your server. Also, how to replace or reinstall the CPU. So yeah, it's very nice that they have put it so close by. So, I have never seen inside this uh, beside that we just had it open. But uh, yeah, this is how that looks. Trying to see if I can locate where this came out. I haven't found it yet. So uh, yeah, let's take something apart and see what we have. We see the four CPUs here. Awesome. So let's, uh, let's see. We need this plastic off. Uh, the plastic, it tells us which CPUs where. That one is CPU number four, that one is CPU number three, that one is CPU number one, and that one is CPU number two. Then there is all the RAM. They are numbered on the plastic here. And you'll pack up racks about something. Okay, how do you get this out? I think it's installed wrong. Yeah, it was. It's supposed to sit here, it was sitting uh, like this and in pressure, so, but it came out, I didn't break it either, so awesome, holy, that's a lot of brand, and these are, oh they're only 4 gigabyte blocks, but there's a lot of them, let's see, the same amount in each, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so there are 32 gigabytes of memory to each CPU, so that's 128 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, that's a nice amount of RAM. There's room for a battery here. The battery is located here, but there's room for one more there. Okay, so the battery for the RAID controller is here, and the RAID controller is this little card here, uh, which extends whatever is on the system board. So, well, we'll get to that. Let's have a RAM block out of here. It seems like there's two different types because these are differently colored. They might just be differently colored. They might be the same. Shooter packet RAM. It's four gigabytes. It's one RX4 PC3, which is DDR3 RAM. And it's 12,600R glasses. I think I found the missing screw. There's a screw missing there. There's one over here, and there's one missing there. Let's put that in. There. We can use the tool on the back. There. We can tighten that. So that it don't come out again. Let's make sure that the other ones are tight as well. Yeah, they, uh, they are good for a little twist. Ah, there were some black ones there as well. They were very tight, so nothing wrong with those. System board screws. Fine. Remember to put the tool back on the back. Otherwise you'll be missing it when you need it the next time. Okay, mystery screw found. It kind of have a cool system if you want to get to the CPU. You, you pull this lever here and this one comes up and you can kind of just take the, the CPU cooler out now. Let's just do that. There. I think this is fine. So there are some dots, so and there's some other dots on the other end, so you can't put this in the wrong way. Plus they have told you which way the wind is supposed to go. I'm sure it has to do with these copper heat spreaders that has to do something in the right way. So let's put that back in. And then this one, tighten it down nicely. And when the plastic is on there, these can't go out. They are kind of locked in place with the plastic. So the plastic keeps those in, in place. This server has one riser card. There is room for another one right there. That one is not in. It just has an empty blank here. So it just has one riser card. We'll try and take that out. And Hewlett Packard has their own system here. I think that's kind of okay. I kind of like that system. And you uh, 
are told where to handle it. Blue thing here, blue thing there. Get it up there. And we can see that, well, they have made room for a, a GPU there and two X8 slots. And they have one of their 10 pin power connections there. So you need, if you have a GPU there, it can't be a very big GPU. There's not a lot of space. So short GPU, like a, you, you, we could put a mining card in there. That would probably fit nicely. And then power that with the power right there. So that's cool. We'll put that to the side. We can see here that there is two connections for the hard drives in front of the server. On the system board, there is a RAID controller. That RAID controller is expanded with this card here. So if you want to get a better RAID controller, you buy a better card over here. It doesn't say it like that. You buy the server and then you can buy it with this, this and this RAID controller. And what they do is you get another better card. There is more cache RAM, there is other RAID possibilities and features on it. And then you have a better one. But a lot of the stuff comes standard with the server. Probably something hiding behind this nice cooler here that has to do with the, with the RAID controller. And we had two connections. These connections are usually four drives, but as there is five drives on the front, they have used both of them. So I would guess that two of them is on one and three of them is on another one. We have the, the back plane up here underneath the fans so all of this is built together so we had one connector here and one connector here and then it's powered from oh you probably can't see that but there is actually two power connections going into the back plane which is quite a lot for five small hard drives but they also power the fans the fan and hard drive back plane is built together and on this tiny little pcb there is not much there they could have built a SAS extender out there and just had one cable, but I guess this gives you ever so slightly more performance. But you do use both of your SAS channels doing that. So the RAID card up here, um, which is this one, I investigated it and this server comes with the P420. It's kind of a standard card, it's nothing special. It has one gigabyte of cache on here and it's not a battery, it's actually capacitors that is in the other end so they don't die as as hard. It can handle up to 60 drives and we're using it for just five and it comes with all the regular rates and it even does rate 6 and rate 60. It has all the bells and whistles. This is a 6 gigabit per second rate controller. And it looks like this. You can see it says 1 gigabyte up there. So that's what it looks like. So you plop that in and you can replace it with, well, I don't know. If you needed something else, you can pop it. I don't know what that could be. You have five drives in the front of the server. So there must be a limit to what you could need on there. And the RAID controller connects to these connections here. Well, mini SAS, internal mini SAS cables. And I'm not a big fan of these connections on the system board. I always feel like they will break off, but they never do. So I guess they're good enough, but yeah, I would have liked them to lay down instead. But I guess they take up, probably take up too much room on the system board if they do that. And when they are located like this, they take up a lot of height here. So I'm not sure that that mining card would be able to fit there we only have this part left for putting in a card otherwise they will be in violation of the of the connections <laughs> so in the corner we have this empty spot which just happens to fit this lum card here so uh, one gigabit ethernet port let's not worry about what brand this is it's flr yeah they, they, they tend to change the names of these things. So sometimes it's an FLR, sometimes it's a LOM, then it's a daughter card and make up your bloody minds. It um, pops in place. Uh, there's a little slot here. It's an X8-ish that is located down there. And then you tighten the screw and you have a network card. And if the network card dies, you can replace it. 
instead of it being on the system board where you would have to replace the whole system board. These are fairly cheap if you buy a whole bunch of servers. If you buy one of them, they're regularly priced. They will be the same price as if you get one that goes into the riser cart. But I'm pretty sure that Hewlett Packard and all the other brands, they get a different deal on the cards if they can't go into anything else because I can't go and, uh, and use this card for anything else. I don't know if I could pop it in here. Should we try that to see if it actually fits? It doesn't fit there, but it might fit somewhere else. I don't think it fits, but you know. It actually does fit. I don't know if it would work here. They might have done something weird. Just flip a few connections to, to make it not work. But, well, they could have been evil like that. I haven't tried. Maybe someday we will. Let's pop it back in. But as it can't be put into any other server, they are able to do a better deal with Broadcom and say, oh, we want this and it's a special card. And Broadcom, well, they're not really competing with anyone else because the, the thing that, that Hewlett Packard is buying from Broadcom can't be used with anything else, but all the companies does it. They have this, yeah, on the newer models, you can actually pop them in from the back and they will connect. So they're kind of hot pluggable, but not on this one, you have to open up. Then we have the HPA here. Uh, I don't think we really need that because I'm very happy with the with the rate controller that is in here. So I'm gonna leave this out. So let's have a turn around and see things from another perspective. Down here we have a little bit, we have a micro SD card slot where you can put in a micro SD card that the server can boot from. This is great for ESXi uh, VMware and you can boot from that. I'm not sure if there's many other systems that does that. Normally the SD card is a little bit too slow and it's you're not able to write to it enough so that it really is good for that. Also, there's a USB connection, does the same thing. Sometimes it's a shared connection, sometimes it's not. Um, so you can put in a USB. Also, I don't like the USB sticking up here. I would have liked them to have put that in. So you, yeah, same thing. BIOS battery here, the standard 3 volt lithium ion CR2032 batteries, button battery. Then we have the ILO here. That is about what is interesting here. There's the slot for the second riser card. I kind of find it funny that Hewlett Packard has these two, it looks like standard PCI Express ports here. Uh, X16s, uh, like, <laughs> yeah, you can kind of see it. It's one of these ports, and there's just two of them. So the riser card must be splitting them up uh, in some way. Ooh, I found this scary system board copyright 2011 2012. That means that this server is nearing to be 10 years old. Time is flying so fast when you're having fun. I feel like this is a newer server, but yeah, I'm getting old. All of the chips back here are dated back in 2012. So um, this one is from May 2012, and this one is from March 2012. So yeah, it's becoming an old boy. Let's put the riser back in. Uh, very often there are different riser cards available. So you might want one with an X16, but you might also want with just three X8 or whatever you might. And they're usually available as spare parts. And when you buy a new server, you pay next to nothing for, for the different riser cards. They get more expensive along the way. Let's see if we can manage this. There. And then there is an explanation of how to remove and how to replacement. So um, more or less, you have these and you push it down and you turn it around and when it stops, you put it down. down. The server has 128 gigabytes of memory. It can handle 768 gigabytes of memory 
fully occupied. Um, let's put this in right this time. Yeah, there we are. That was a lot of memory back in 2012, for sure. The CPUs in this server came out in first quarter of 2014, so they are newer than the server itself. Or this server was on the shelf for quite a while before it got CPUs. I forgot to tell you what was special about these CPUs. They are very fast. Uh, these are 8 core CPUs, which is not anything special. This uh, series of uh, CPUs, I think 12 cores they had maximum, but these run at 3.3 GHz, which was quite a lot. And they turbo boost up to 3.6 GHz, but they do not have hyperfretting. So we have four CPUs here without hyperfretting. So we have 32 real cores in this server which in 2000 and well this would be 14 would be a lot of threads a lot of ram so this server was meant for virtualization um, high-end virtualization or maybe missing critical databases this would have been a very expensive server and those cpus would have been very expensive actually the listing prices of these when they were new was about 2300 dollars each so there is for nine thousand dollars of cpu in this new price <laughs> so, ouch and the virtualization would of course you, you would focus the server at a workload where there would be no benefit from having hyperfretting like if you are not over commissioning the cpus if you work with databases and the database avengers like oracle microsoft sql um, hardware prices they, they kind of fade out compared to the prices of those licenses of those very expensive databases so to get the most out of your licenses you just buy the most uh, focused hardware that will do that task as fast as possible with as few cores as possible. And that might be a use case where this would get in handy. Often you don't pay for the hyperfretting cores, but if it doesn't help you, and by cutting them away, you can up the frequency and thereby have single core performance higher on this server than if it had hyperfretting. So might be a use case. We are back in the future. <laughs> where the server is out of the box and I'm done rambling along with what this was. So, um, thank you very much to CERN for shipping this from Germany. Shipping is expensive, I know about that. And so it's very awesome to have subscribers that uh, help me out in this bigger matter. I'm gonna end the video here. If you would like to help in some weird way like this, my um, shipping address is in the About tab on YouTube if you wanna ship me something expensive uh, do contact me first because um, I, I wasn't really gonna say yes to an Hewlett Packard server but it was only because it was this model of server that I found it interesting there is a lot of servers that I would have said no thank you to but if you otherwise want to help go buy something over at Bargain Hardware and use the checkout code my playhouse and you get 5% off of your purchase and you help me too Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Yeah, we should mount this. <laughs>